Welcome back to Busy Keto Life, where you get the information you need to succeed in all your keto goals. One of the things most of us have heard our entire lives is that high triglycerides are a significant health risk. Most of us believe that because we heard it from people we trust, primarily medical professionals. The other reason we believed it is because the message has been so consistent, seemingly something everyone agrees upon. How would you feel if it turned out everything you'd been told about high triglycerides was not factual or backed up by science. Let's talk about it. I'm Dave Champion, your guide to succeeding at keto, and today I want to speak with you about triglycerides, specifically high triglycerides. As always, when I tackle something on the Busy Keto Life channel, it's because it may have an impact on those seeking or pursuing success at the ketogenic lifestyle. If you talk with enough people who are on keto, you find that lipids, cholesterol, and triglycerides go down for some and up for others. Based on our lifelong programming in this myth-based society in which we live, most people are thrilled if their lipids go down and become concerned if they rise. I wonder how many people have abandoned their keto journey because they became fearful when their lipids rose. I also wonder in how many cases they abandoned their keto journey because their MD told them they were heading towards heart disease and premature death because of those elevated lipids. Today's question is, is any of that factual? Today I'm going to focus just on triglycerides. I blow apart the cholesterol scam in another video. One of the tools used to create fear of high triglycerides is the medical industry's scale used for warning patients about triglycerides. It looks like this. Less than 150 milligrams is said to be normal. 150 to 199 is said to be borderline high. 200 to 499 is called high. And 500 or more is referred to as very high. You may have noted that the first level was referred to as normal. Have you ever wondered what normal actually means? Did you subconsciously equate normal with healthy? In fact, normal has nothing to do with healthy. Normal merely means that it's the range most people fall within when tested. Whether that range or being in another range is healthy is a different question. Given that the bottom range speaks of 150 and the top range 500, does it surprise you to learn that a lot of people have triglycerides well above 3,000? When in ketosis, your body uses two forms of lipids exclusively for energy, ketones and triglycerides. But wait, are high triglycerides bad? If they're half the body's energy supply when in ketosis, how can an energy resource being high also be bad? The party line from the medical community is that high triglycerides have been linked to a greater chance for heart disease. But is that factual? As it turns out, no. No, it's not. There is no study in existence that shows high triglycerides by themselves, absent other factors, increases a person's risk of heart disease. Not one. Isn't that fact startling in contrast to the BS being put out by Big Med? While your primary care physician or specialist you're seeing may not be what you define as Big Med, it's important to understand that 99% of MDs parrot whatever party line Big Med puts out. So, while you may like your primary care physician and feel comfortable with him or her, you should not trust them. While they may not intend to lie to you, 99% of them are putting out Big Med's BS on a slew of issues, triglycerides being just one of them. If what I just shared with you isn't shocking enough, it gets even more convoluted. Guess what those other factors are that Big Med says leads to increased risk of heart disease? High LDL. But guess what? There is no direct evidentiary link showing high LDL increases your risk of heart disease either. The link, if we can call it that, is merely numerical. In other words, statistically speaking, more people with high cholesterol and high triglycerides get heart disease than do those with lower cholesterol and triglycerides. But that doesn't show us cause, does it? The simple fact is heart disease is caused by the standard American diet, which is high in carbohydrates while eating fat. Eating meals high in carbohydrates and fats together is what promotes heart disease. And since eating keto, high fat, low carbs, causes people to drop virtually all of their excess body fat and become incredibly healthy, obviously the culprit in the mix that causes heart disease is the carbohydrates, not the fat. It's so startlingly simple, it's hard to understand how a $3.5 trillion industry could get it so wrong. On the other hand, 
what would happen to the $3.5 trillion industry if everybody suddenly got healthy? Since the 1980s, the medical community, prompted by the U.S. government, the Agriculture Department in particular, has been promoting diets high in carbs. Now, they don't use the phrase high in carbs, but one looks at how unhealthy most carbs actually are for us, what the government has been recommending for the last 40 years is, in reality, a high-carb diet. If you don't want to play this semantics game of what is low-carb, medium-carb, and high-carb, which I totally understand, we can just say that what the government and the medical community has been recommending for the last 40 years is way too many damn carbs and the wrong kind. That bad information is the core of our national health crisis. A person eating the standard American diet can get their triglyceride levels to fall simply by cutting out most of the unhealthy carbs they're eating. They can get their level to fall even further by not eating meals that are high in carbs combined with fats. Knowing what I know today, I would never, as an example, eat a plate of pasta. But eating a plate of pasta covered in a fatty sauce such as Alfredo is asking for an appointment with a cardiologist down the road. Let's take a quick moment to contrast that with what is healthy. Take that same Alfredo sauce in the very same quantity, put it on some asparagus, have a modest amount of protein with it, and have it end up so the macro ratio is 80% fat, 15% protein, and 5% all less carbs, and you just flip the entire equation on its head. Now it's unlikely you'll ever need to see a cardiologist. and You ate the very same Alfredo sauce. In other words, the fat remained the same. The big shift was in the carbs. Get it? Now that I've said eating the standard American diet is what drives up lipids and causes heart disease, didn't I just confirm that high triglycerides are a problem? Not at all. Remember, despite billions of dollars being spent over decades on lipids research, there is not one study showing high triglycerides by themselves are linked to any health problems. So what's going on here? If I went into detail on that today, this would be a very long video. So, for the purpose of this presentation, which is to clarify the triglyceride issue, let me just say that the standard American diet results in a gradual crippling of many, if not all, of the body's numerous systems, all of which are intended to function together, supporting one another as a harmonious whole, to maintain our health. When a person is eating the standard American diet and we see high lipids across the board or high LDL and triglycerides with low HDL, what we're seeing isn't the problem. What we're seeing is a symptom of the problem, which is a general degradation of all the various systems of the body. Other symptoms of this general degradation can be seen in the bizarre increase in autoimmune disorders, a growing weakness in immune systems generally, and the dramatic fall in certain hormones, to name just a few of hundreds. It's truly an epidemic on a grand scale, obscured by the medical community insisting we look at each condition as a separate, unrelated issue. You may have noticed many of my statements today have been prefaced with, when a person is eating the standard American diet. I preface those comments that way because not everything I've said about lipids is equally true for those in ketosis. Ketosis alters our body's energy source, and that's a shift at a fundamental level. Not only that, it's a shift that is directly relevant to triglycerides because when we shift from the standard American diet to being in ketosis, triglycerides go from functioning in a body that is using primarily carbs for energy to functioning as one of the only two elements providing the body's energy, the other being ketones. This graph represents the distinction in triglyceride use when on the standard American diet versus when in ketosis. The green bar represents the amount of triglycerides used for energy when eating the standard American diet, the orange bar when you're in ketosis. To make such a major dietary shift with such a dramatic impact on the role of triglycerides, and then to still apply the existing triglyceride scale designed for those who are eating the standard American diet is, well, let's just say it's kind of silly. So, will we see a triglyceride scale properly indexed for those in ketosis based on research? I doubt it. Big Med, Big Pharma, Big Agro, and their allies within the government see scientific facts getting out about things like sugar, starch, and most carbs being the root of America's health problems, and high fat consumption, including eating lots of saturated fat being good for you, as a huge threat. Big Med, Big Pharma, and Big Agro combined represent 26% of the U.S. economy, or nearly $5 trillion. 
And guess who funds most of the medical research in America? Has there been any research on ketosis? Sure, but only as it relates to specific narrow issues, never in terms of our overall systemic health or altering the nation's nutritional paradigm. As an example, there has been research into ketosis to determine its effect on athletic performance. The U.S. Navy is currently researching how ketosis can mitigate epileptic-type seizures Navy SEALs have when they're on rebreathing apparatus too long. And there's been a slew of research addressing other very narrow questions about ketosis. Have there been any studies on how keto affects our overall systemic health? Nope. Have there been any studies tackling smaller constituent parts of that larger equation with the intention of building a comprehensive analysis of the subject? Not to my knowledge, nor do I anticipate any. Who's going to pay for them? The very people whose pocketbooks are most threatened by the healthy changes that occur when people adopt the keto lifestyle? How about taxpayer funding from the National Institute of Health? NIH is controlled by politicians, and the politicians want contributions from that 26% of the U.S. economy controlled by those who see the truth as a threat to their wallets, so I'm not holding my breath for that. What's the takeaway from all this? As far as triglycerides are concerned, for those of us who are in ketosis and dropping excess body fat or remaining lean, your triglyceride level is a non-issue. Keep this in mind. When following the ketogenic lifestyle, you are already doing 100% of the things that can reduce triglyceride levels. So, when in ketosis, whatever level your triglycerides are at is the level your body wants them at. I have to add a cautionary note here. Do not fool yourself. On social media, I see a lot of folks talking about being on keto, but then I see from their other posts, such as what they're eating, they're really not doing keto. So if you're not really living the ketogenic lifestyle, please don't dismiss high lipid panels showing high triglycerides with high LDL and low HDL. That is your body screaming at you to get into ketosis. Listen to it. What do we do about the keto-based research we'd all love to see done, which is unlikely to happen? Nothing. There is enough rock-solid research already in place showing keto dramatically reduces serious medical issues such as heart disease, insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes, and type 1 diabetes that we already know keto rocks. There is also significant and growing anecdotal evidence that the keto lifestyle substantially reduces the chances of stroke and things like dementia and Alzheimer's. Further, while facts developed from research are critical to a society-wide discussion on getting healthy and ending America's health crisis, those of us in the keto community have our own personal evidence. It comes in the form of our outward transformation, such as can be seen here, as well as in our overall systemic health improvements, which for many of us have been dramatic. And keep this in mind, like anything else, those who want the benefits keto provides will jump on it. Those who don't, won't. The best we can do is have the discussion with them. And to that end, please take a moment to hit the subscribe button so you'll be notified every time another informative keto video posts here. Then use these busy keto live videos to share the truth with as many people as you can. Also, if you found this video informative, please click the thumbs up button for me. And lastly, let me know about your triglyceride situation in the comments. Are yours low or high? Did they change when you got on keto? I'm interested to know your story. Thanks for spending this time with me. I'll speak with you again soon.